when science and faith inform one another, what I think you have certainly is a lack of fear or suspicion or defensiveness from either side, but we can push it a lot more than that. This ought to be more than just can't we all get along. I think what you see uh, in a minister who has at least the rudiments of understanding of the basics of science is, as I was saying, somebody who is a very effective listener is able to see beneath the surface of just you know, off-the-cuff type remarks that a pastoral minister will often have with people. Um, and as someone who is able to kind of uh, carefully assess his own thoughts or her own thoughts in the sense of what are the assumptions that I'm making? What are the initial conditions that I'm bringing to this pastoral situation? Uh, and then I think for the scientists, certainly uh, ethical questions, uh, faith helps them address that. How am I using this knowledge and this power that I have? Um, also perhaps just a deeper sense of wonder at the universe. Um, but I'll be honest, I think faith has a lot more to gain from science than vice versa. And that's really the direction that I'm most interested in exploring. When science and faith inform one another, it looks a lot to me like the epiphany scene. Uh, the wise men came from the east, they followed the stars, they made use of the natural sciences to find the child. And upon finding the child and his mother, they were filled with joy. In the same way, I imagine that the child and his mother uh, were overjoyed to be found by these people who had used the natural sciences so that Jesus could reveal his salvation to them as well. And so I think the joy of the epiphany scene is sort of what the relationship between science and faith encountering one another uh, might seem like. Concretely, I think science can be a great use to persons of faith. For example, in my field of moral theology, very often we're talking about beginning or end of life issues, and the science of brain death, for example, can help families make critical decisions enlightened by the church's moral teaching about the goodness of human life and the journey from this life to the next. The same is true at the beginning of life when talking about uh, things like embryonic stem cell research, for example. One can make a scientific case for who and what the embryo is on the basis of reason, but then the church, can, she can propose uh, her moral teaching as a way of understanding uh, the data that comes from science. So we can move from an is to an ought and so shape uh, moral action, which can also protect and defend and nurture uh, human life. So I see the encounter between science and faith being one of joy and of life and really of light, if you will, because the two uh, inform one another and enlightened one another. I think science and faith inform one another because both of them are trying to get at uh, the whole idea of mystery. Uh, science is trying to answer questions about the mystery of, of life and the mystery of the universe and how we got here and what our purpose is and where we're going. And I think faith at its best is trying to respond to the mystery of life as well. Uh, but the mystery of life in light of the fact that um, we, we believe that God has uh, put us here and we ask questions about how we got here, where we're going, and what's our meaning of life while we're here. So I really think that science and faith uh, are trying to get at the same question kind of from different perspectives, uh, but certainly with kind of a, the big picture in mind for both of them. My first training is in medicine and particularly in pediatrics. And uh, my second training is in theological ethics. So I try to take advantage of the opportunity of having two uh, training, uh, two formation, two type, types of formation, one in science and at least one particular science and one in theology. And the perspective that uh, these two formations allow me to articulate is interdisciplinarity. So the, the attempt of helping the students to see how both science and the theology can uh, mutually enrich each other in addressing issues and challenges. In the course, I uh, help the students to see what are uh, new developments in a series of uh, scientific developments in biotechnologies, beginning with the human genetics and, genetics and continuing with the neuroscience, 
synthetic biology, regenerative medicine, oncofertility, robotics and artificial intelligence, cyber technology, transhumanism and astrobiology. So there's a large variety of new biotechnological developments. And uh, I'm trying to see if it's possible to help the students who will work as ministers uh, with the theological formation to work and interact with scientists in a constructive way by being aware of what are the developments in these disciplines, what are the challenges that these disciplines are uh, bringing to society, and how they can join scientists in uh, addressing these challenges. I'm trying to see if it's possible to help our students to be competent in their understanding of uh, some of the challenges of these disciplines and uh, be interlocutors so that they can, together with scientists, work for a better society. It seems to me that uh, science and religion are, uh, by some, perceived as uh, in opposition, or they, uh, in the past, have thought as such. On the contrary, my impression is that uh, there are ways in which we can think of science and religion as uh, part of a unity, a harmony, a synergy. And so uh, an image that I have in mind is uh, the circle of yin and yang, where there is no co competition, there is no overlap, but on the contrary, there is integration and interaction. And in the circle of life, the image that science and religion give with looking at yin and yang is of completeness because of their diversity and the possibility that we can understand better the complexity of reality by looking at what sciences are telling us, but at the same time integrating this uh, scientific perception and understanding with uh, uh, the richness of theological discourse, with insights from the theological tradition, with uh, spiritual experience. Unity, harmony, and synergy are images that describe uh, this positive interaction. And I would say, when science and religion are able to work together, we have uh, a greater ability of addressing the complexity of issues that we are facing. For example, uh, let us think of uh, sustainability, the threat to life on the planet and in the cosmos that uh, human development is causing. Sciences help us to understand the urgency of addressing this challenge. And the religion can help us to motivate and accompany and support the commitment that is needed to promote the common good, to address uh, environmental issues, to produce energy in a way that we respect uh, the quality of life on the planet, caring for those who are more vulnerable, and. Uh, be attentive to the quality of life and flourishing on the planet, thinking issues that are specific of the global north and the challenges that are present in the global south that is in development.